Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, for those who don't know, I am Sarah. I am pretty broken, especially right now, because yet again, I may or may not have broken my scaphoid, a little bone in your wrist. So we'll get, we'll find out that. Today we are joined by my mummy. What is your name, mummy? Judith. I have some questions for her about what it's like to have a disabled child and what it's like to be their carer. So my first question is, did I so show any signs of any issues as a child? No, not really. You were quite a healthy child. Um, you used to be full of energy, constantly on the go. I used to say that you'd never put any weight on because you never sat still. Um, yeah, you were always health, healthy, um, happy, certainly prior to school and that you were always very happy. I know you had some issues at school, but outside of that, happy, friendly, and um, had lots of friends. And... Um, is it weird to care for your child? Especially as I'm like 24, which is quite young to be cared for in that way, but also quite old to care for as much as you do as a mother. Yeah, I mean, it's become normal in the sense of, you know, you've been ill now for a few years. But, um, yeah, it's not something that I envisaged having to do. I thought more it would be you caring for me. Because um, you're so old. Because I'm so old. No, but, you know, I was thinking in the future, you you know, as I got old, you'd end up with caring for me. But, um, yeah, as your health is deteriorated, it's... Um, it's very brought on having to deal more with um, looking after you. And yes, it is weird, um, but it has become the norm. It's been very weird for me that it is normal, if that makes sense. Absolutely, yeah. Like so many things that I have to like do and I just don't care anymore. It doesn't bother me and then I forget that other people are like, haven't been through the same stuff so they're like not comfortable with me suddenly being like changing in front of like everybody you know and that sort of stuff and uh, that can get me in trouble um, <laughs> um how does it all make you feel i don't know um a whole range of emotions really um saddened it's it's sad to think that you're suffering as much as you do. Angry, um, you know, why should this happen to you? Um, I don't know. There's it's all things that I've got that I've had to come to terms with. But yeah, it's it's strange because it's. Yes, it's become the norm, but it's it's also something that I don't feel that I should have to. You know, I don't, you know, I so much want for you to be better again. Um, and I know that's probably not going to happen, but I, I'm hoping that we can get you to a, at least a stage where you're coping with your disabilities better than you are now. Um yeah, sometimes I'm really angry, sometimes I'm really sad. And sometimes I just try to be brave and stoic and just try and be there to support you for what you need. Um, but that doesn't always happen. You never have to be brave. No. What have you learnt from having like this whole situation change and stuff and me being like having to be in a wheelchair and having to be cared for? Um... I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I know far more about the the, the illnesses that you've got <laughs> and maybe a few others that um, you possibly might have had but haven't got. Mm. Um, so a um, bit of online reading and also um, meeting various doctors. I know the layout of so many different hospitals now <laughs> much better than I did before. <laughs> um, which departments, um, where the different hospitals are. Um, but... Also, it's it's more about I've got a better perception of how difficult it is for people with disabilities. Um, 
from pushing you around in the wheelchair I can notice how difficult it is for anybody that's in a wheelchair on their on their own you know um, where the pavements go down and then there's not, not an, a slopey down bit at the other side of the road and you know for me I can sort of push down on the back of the, the wheelchair and lift you up um, mm. and and I know a lot of disabled people are, are quite proficient of sort of doing those sort Popping of a wheelie yeah the the wheelie bits and getting up but it's it's just little things that would make it so much easier for people that people don't um appreciate um and just i try to be more um wary of not wary of other people but um think about when people are in a wheelchair as well now more than i did before because i know from pushing you around especially up in london you know people are on their phones looking at their phones walking along and you're almost afraid that people are going to walk into you. And you you're sort of like trying to move out of the way with the, with this wheelchair because people are just um, not necessarily being selfish, but they're so, so unaware. So, yeah, self absorbed. They're, they're so much concentrating on what they're doing that they're not thinking about um, people around them. So I, I try and think about that more, not only for disabled people but for for able bodied people. Just try and be aware and. Um, you know, see where people are going when you're going in opposite directions, so that you can mm. go to the appropriate side of, side of the pavement and things like that. But yeah, I I notice because like when, where driveways are, I, the the camber of the pavement slopes mm. down. So um, you then sat in the chair like. So now I I because um, like if there's disabled people coming the other way or people pushing trams. I would now, me as an able person, go to the slopey side of the pavement <laughs> more than stick to the other side because I, I know how difficult it can be for, for people pushing or trying to manoeuvre a um, a wheelchair on those bits of the pavement. Mm. It sort of like um, overlaps with that, but uh, it was the stuff that you wish that other people knew. Um. I think in general it, it would be helpful if, if people knew about a lot of the illnesses that are mm. are out there because there are so many that um, um, affect people in different ways. Um, there's there's things from mental illness which is so not visible to people, uh, and I think it's something that people need to be aware of that you need to meet people where they are not where you think they should be. Because, you know, if somebody's um, feeling depressed or something like that, you can't just expect them to, to smile and be jolly and to sort of snap out of it as people often ask people to do, which is virtually impossible. Mm -hmm. um, people can um, put a, a mask on and sort of pretend they're a bit happier than they are, but they can't really snap out of it. Uh, and people just need to be aware and just meet people where they are. Um, there's so many diseases out there. I've been surprised how many young people are affected by disabilities and and chronic illnesses, which I wouldn't, I wouldn't have thought was possible before you got ill. I knew about some young people um, being being ill and having difficulties, but I thought it was a rarer occurrence than it it actually is, and it it just saddens me that. Young people, especially when they should be at the prime of their life, are struggling so much with with no sort of um, good, you know, view forward, sort of, uh, you know, leaving school and stuff. You, you should be thinking about, oh, what job? And, it, and you, your job should be maybe restricted by what, what results you got in your education rather than what can I cope with? with my body um how will my body cope with this uh and i know for you in particular it's you have good days and bad days mm. um so it's it's working out what you can do and what would be flexible enough for you to be able to do that you know when you know you don't know until the morning when you wake up whether it's going to be a good day or a bad day and even then you know you might start off well and suddenly go downhill so quickly 
it's just very difficult and it's, I, it just saddens me and I wish there was something that I could do to to make things better for people you know if, if there was if there was a, a cure but it cost too much money then you know you, you can get involved in fundraising things uh, and things like that but when when you don't know what you can do to help it just makes you feel so helpless thank you it's been very very enlightening to hear your side of the story and i'm sorry if i made you a bit sad <laughs> <laughs> a little bit emotional but um yeah that's that's only because i love you so much oh come here thank you very much for being in my video that's all right i hope that was helpful uh, and that you learn a bit about what it's like from the angle of a parent carer. See you next time.